Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Byers, and this is Indy 255, and we're in on Module 6. And we're going over the effects, and we're going to work on fireworks, the fireworks effect. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. I want you to have Outliner open, so go ahead and go to Windows, Outliner. Get that opened up so you can see that. And then we need to go into the Settings Preferences folder to make sure our time slider is set up properly. So playback speed is uh, play every frame, and max playback speed is 24 frames times one. Click on save. Okay, we're ready to start the fire effects, fireworks effects. So we're going to go hold hold down the space bar, and we're going to go into uh, hotbox controls. Go to show VFX, or excuse me, FX and FX only. That way we can just easily get to it. All right, so now we're going to go into effects. And you can see we have fire, fireworks, we have lightning, shatter, and smoke. So we're going to work on the fire fireworks. Go, go ahead and go into the option box. And since we don't really know what we want our fireworks to look like, we're going to go ahead and use the default settings since this is the first time for you guys to open it up. So we're going to go ahead and click on create. All right. So in module six, I have a couple options like I want you to look and make sure you look at your My Effects options in Module 6 under Lesson Content Lectures and Video Tutorials. So with this video tutorial, I have options that you guys can look at as you're kind of messing around with fireworks or any other effects. So after you create the fireworks, you can adjust general group related attributes by editing the fireworks attributes. You can do this by using the channel box or the attribute editor. So let's go ahead and I usually don't uh, take you through. I'll show you some of the things that you can find in the attribute editor. That tends to go really deep. So let's keep it topical for this lecture. And we're going to do control A and get into the channel box. All right. So the first thing you see is the max burst speed. So let's go ahead and play what we have so far. Okay. And in here you can see that we, in our outliner, we can see that fireworks is uh, right here. And let's go ahead and play it. Let's back it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to click off so you can see the colors and stuff. Pretty amazing, really. Um, this is probably one of the most intricate effects um, that Maya has with all the things that are going on and I'll stop this a minute and I'll show you what it looks like rendered so let's go ahead and go back to when it was bursting there we go something like that and then let's go into the settings render settings and we need to have Maya software available now Arnold Renderer will not render these properly and hardware 2 doesn't render these properly, so Maya software is, is what we're going to be rendering the fireworks with. Okay, so there's a lot of different effects that we have that will not work together in the same exact renderer until Arnold actually decides that it's going to start adding all the effects, and that would be great. I'm surprised that they haven't added those already. Um, so maybe it'll be in the next iteration, but right now you can't. If they do render then they won't look the same. So Maya Software, if you want to see what they look like, and make sure you go to production quality and then highest quality. And then under Commons tab, we're just gonna render very small at HD540. And that's it, basically it. And let's go ahead and do a render. And you can see a couple things going on here. You can see um, a bloom effect or a glow effect um, and you can see the actual fireworks uh, cones they're called cones that are coming out now the reason why it doesn't look as realistic as it could is because it doesn't have motion blur so we talked about that before another using when we use effects that you may want to elongate the trail or add motion blur you can do it. You can do it post effect in After Effects, or you can use it, do it a post effect um, in Premiere Pro. Uh, those are things you can look at. Um, but 
in Maya, we've we've used motion blur. It only takes you so far. We got 3D and 2D motion blur, and 3D doesn't really do much, and 2D doesn't do much either. It gives you a little bit. We try to do that with the fountain, and it just didn't give me the effect that I really want. And that's kind of an effect that you can get from post processing and really control that. So a lot of these effects won't work together in the same scene because of rendering issues. Um, there are things you can render. Um, with software, and there's things you can render in hardware. So most time, most most of the time, that when you do effects, you're going to composite them together in a program like After Effects or Nuke. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So with the render view, it looks pretty good. I mean, for what we get, it's pretty cool. And so if we look at the um, settings now for this fire effect, let's go ahead and click on Fireworks so we can get that open. So if you don't see anything in the channel box you'll have to click in the outliner um, the fireworks the whole thing alright so let's kinda go down the list here and I want you to kinda play with these yourself I'm just gonna kinda take you through them what they do so max burst speed affects how fast all rockets burst and consequently how wide the burst appears so how they how fast they are and how wide they burst out. So those are things you can change. So let's go ahead and change that from 20 to 100. Let's go quite a bit higher. Let's go back and play. So now you can see that it's unrealistic. Maybe you want it to be like that, um, but I don't like that. So 20 is pretty good actually, I think. All right, so the next one is a minimum sparks count. So each burst consists of a number of streaks randomly distributed between these two values, okay? So they have them set up at 100. If we set it at 10, let's take a look at what we have there. Just keep in mind what you had before. And you can see that dramatically changes the way uh, the bursts look, okay? All right, so now we have the max number count. So we can go in here and change that to 40 instead of 200, okay? And now we can take a look at what we have here. And now we've got what looks like a really bad fireworks display that you probably wouldn't ever see again. You wouldn't want to see that. So you can play you can kind of play with those a little bit. So minimum, I'm going to go with 20, and then we're going to go back to 200. Okay. All right, so you can kind of see what's going on there. So now we've got something a little bit nicer that looks a little bit more realistic. Okay. All right, uh, color sparks, color, sparks color spread determines the number of colors to be used per burst. The colors are selected from the palette of colors established by the numeric spark colors option. The spread refers to the number of colors on each either side of the green color. So that basically what it's saying is just saying that their colors are going to be changed um, and added. You can add more colors to it, more co color variants. Let's go back into fireworks. There we go. So let's turn that spread from one to uh, four. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and play that. So you can see that the colors are kind of mingling together, um, which more, looks more like a rainbow or confetti type of fireworks. And let's go ahead and click on fireworks again and change that back maybe to two. There we go. Okay, so we're getting kind of a a change in colors, but they're of they're in kind of in the same tone. So you can see that we went from one to two, or excuse me, yeah, from one to two. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go back. Okay, so we just did the color spread from one to two, and you can see that it changed the colors, uh, the tone from just having a solid one color tone to two tones and then so on and then I was up to 10 with the confetti one 
which added colors throughout the entire thing and it looks more like confetti than it does but I kinda like the two the spread of two works pretty good let's click on that let's go back I just wanna see the colors if it'll show again there you go okay let's go back again okay so you can see those two tones. There's kind of a purple and then and there's a pink. So that's kind of nice. All right. So let's go back. Click on the fireworks again. Don't worry about this uh, warning. Okay. Just just kind of ignore that. All right. So that's the the color spread. Uh, gravity. That's self-explanatory. Um, basically, that's for um, the the trajectory up. And then when you pop, when it pops and explodes at the top of the trajectory. Now, uh, the rocket gravity is set at 9.8, which is gravity of Earth. So we'll just go ahead and play with that a minute. And I think you guys get the idea that you said there's no curve here. You can see that there's no curve. They're going straight up and then they're popping. All right, so what if I set this up to something like uh, 20? What's going to happen is that it's going to pop up the same amount, but then it's going to arc a little bit at the very ends. Okay, let's go back again so we can do it a little more extreme. Let's say like 200. Let's try that. Okay, see how it's kind of falling down? That's way too extreme. So it's pulling it way down. All right, so let's do, let's say, 60. There we go. So you can see a little bit better what's happening. There you go. So it's kind of pulling it down. And you can see those streaks. Okay. I go down. Let's try it again. There it is. So it's kind of curving over. So that's gravity, and that's pretty self-explanatory. You kind of knew that was going to happen. So let's go back to 20. Or excuse me, 9.8. Let's do uh, maybe less gravity. Let's do like uh, two. Okay. Okay. This looks a little unrealistic, and we've got we've <laughs> got some things floating up a little bit too much. Okay, they're still bursting at the same rate. Okay, but they're acting a little different. So rocket gravity, we'll just keep it at 9.8. Okay. All right. Okay, so so uh, show all burst positions. There's no reason really to have those on. It says it shows the rocket burst positions by displaying the rocket particle ID number in the view panel. I don't really see any reason to go, go into that. It doesn't really show anything. Show all launch positions. I suppose you would need to see this if you want to know where things are in your scene and animated. So you could turn those on and check those out. The trail emit rate sets the rate the rockets emit trails. And a trail emit rate of zero means no rocket trail appears. So let's go ahead and look at what we have with no rocket trails. And we had it at 50. All right, so basically there's, yeah, you, you see no trails, which is kind of cool, really, because um, sometimes you'll see fireworks that don't have a trail, and, and they're kind of surprising when they pop. They're just uh, shooting those projectiles up, okay? But realistically, you always have a trail, and it's usually pretty long. So we can do, let's say this was at set at 50, and let's go 100 on that. Let's see what happens. So now you can see a, a lot more trail on that. Okay, which is kind of cool. I, like, I kind of like that at 100. Let's see what it looks like rendered. Okay, so you see a, a, a lot more trail going up, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. So we got emit trail. We got trail emit speed. So it sets the trail emit speed of the rocket's trail particles. You can enter zero or more, or the value of one uh, leaves the spread the speed as is. The value of 0.5 reduces speed by half, 
and let's double the speed so we've got emit speed let's go ahead and double the speed to 2 it's at 0.5 now let's take a look okay it's really hard to see the difference in these um, let's go ahead and render that I can see a little difference there not a whole lot okay let's go to back to 0.5 on that uh, trail emit spread now if this is the same as what we had before it kinda takes you back to when we do a directional particle system and the spread equals the amount of degrees that you have um, but with this one, uh, the value between 0 and 1, a value of 0.5 is 90 degrees, a value of 1 is 180 degrees. So right now we have it set up 0.5, so that's going to be a 90 degree spread. Okay. Um, so if I go in here and do a value of 1, let's do that, and that should give us uh, 180 degrees of spread. Okay. Again, I don't see a whole lot of difference, but um that's what that does so 0.5 on that minimal trail size um just like we did with particle systems when we uh went ahead and use a multi streak or streak um sets the size range of particles within the rocket trails okay so that's that you can mess with that uh the max trail size same thing uh just like you did with streak particles Trail glow, okay, sets the amount of glow from the rocket trail shaders, okay, so it's going to glow more if you have it. Trail incandescent, okay, so trail incandescence sets the amount of incandescence from the the rocket trail shaders. Um, trail incandescence, uh, incandescence is kind of strange, you know, if you have a light bulb and you create a light bulb in Maya, it do, it's not self shading, okay. It, per, it it's shooting light out and so you you're not going to be able to see shadows on it so that's what incandescence is it can it creates an object that doesn't self shadow so you can mess with that and then we got sparks uh, I think we got everything the display geometry don't want to really show that it's at the very bottom um, that's on right now which is fine if you don't want to show just, uh, the geometry, you can just turn that off. Okay. And usually I don't want to show geometry at all when you're doing simulations, so I just turn that off, which is pretty cool. All right, that's that is it. So you can play with the fireworks. Um, it's a pretty cool thing. I don't know how many times you'd ever use it, um, but it's it's very cool and it's there for you guys to play with. And I wanted to take you through it. It's pretty cool. So have fun with it. Enjoy it. And maybe you can figure out a way to use it in your animations. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.